Mark here for the Egyptian Magic Podcast and the Thalemic Symposium, and I'm talking to Jason Reed, who is uh, one of the presenters of the workshop at the forthcoming event. Uh, I should say Jason's kind of burst in onto the scene or into my life as a publisher and our life as a magical interest thing with a series of books starting with uh, a, a kind of small intense pamphlet called thunder magic followed swiftly by fox magic which is almost like a witchy craft thing i think then a much larger extensive volume you can get a picture called practical chinese magic and an even larger more groundbreaking um, kind of book which is uh, luban's book and his own translation and uh, elucidation of the, the luban so that's jason reed he's also well known to lots of people on the internet who are interested in all sorts of aspects of magic really uh, not yeah just really the yeah. chinese thing you're into everything and lots of different yeah. things you're always yeah, I, the yeah, best I, course Go on. yeah yeah i think it you know um you know my my main interest is folk magic you know whether it's chinese or yeah. in english even you know so i have that english background as well in the hermetic yeah. area as well so um so you're saying the connecting link between all these things and all is really folk magic of various yeah. sorts the folk tradition yeah. I, I can yeah. completely relate to that uh, yeah i mean you know as hum as human beings for example that there are you know uh is it the pyramid of needs you you know um there's a sort there's always been this um folksy method of like maybe starting off you know trying to sort out your basic needs and then um and you see that in folk magic in every tradition you know whether it's healing um you know love magic a very controversial area nowadays um, it can be it could be revenge you know all the things that you probably find in the tantras as well you know uh -huh. so, and, I, and i find that there's a co there's a thread of commonality uh, through all these traditions because of basic human nature and yeah. of course you've got the height the higher aspect when once those needs are met with you venture onto other realms you know um self-development right. evolution you know um, so you're not too po-faced about it. You think the practical things of life, even revenge, money, love, these yeah. are not to be frowned upon. You know, and folk magic are not, more realistic about it, really. Yeah. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. Uh, I think that I think that kind of attitude comes from a kind of um Christian conservatism, which, mm. you know, kind of infected a lot of a lot of you know, of that yeah, and Crowley would agree with me, I think, probably, to, cer to a certain extent. Crowley, that, Crowley yeah. disabused you of that point of view. So, because you've got yeah. some familiarity with Crowley, I believe. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a I'm former OTO, yeah. And, uh, you know, I've done the full, the full thing, the, uh, right. the, the triad, the Man of Earth triad and all that. Right. Um, some what years back, that, but I'm so not... But, I'm no longer a member now, but yeah. you know, uh, but that triad is that uh, is that a particular OTO or is that common to all of them? I've never. Yeah, I think that's OTO only. Um, you did your Minerva, your first, second, and third degree. Yeah. Think, all right. That's okay. The man of Earth, right? In in that's the caliber right. structure, anyway. Right. So that's the, the what we, we I don't know if they like that term or not, but uh, what what is commonly known as the Caliphate OTO, they would just yeah. say the OTO, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for, for so you 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 was that your first kind of toe in the water the first thing that you found was the crowley and the oto thing well you know like a lot of sort of like young magicians in the sort of like late 80s 90s my introduction to magic was picking up what you could find you didn't have the internet like we do now yeah, you, know, you, you had to you had to go to a bookshop and Ooh. talk to people. You know. <laughs> um, so I, I was buying your books, of course. You know, yeah. Um, oh, that's uh, always good Kate. to know. Yeah, I think I think one of the first ones I bought was the Kate one published under Katan Schwal. All right, one? gosh, secret yeah. book. <laughs> yeah. Um, and 
and you know obviously the, i went through the other routes i went through the dion fortune you know psychic self-defense go oh wow you know right and disappointed i didn't have like slug trails on my walls and <laughs> things like that. <laughs> be arranged <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i just i just yeah, I just had to invite like uh, uh, Boris Johnson or something, right? Um, so um, yeah, and I went through so the usual. So Crowley, so you got quite a familiarity with Crowley. Yeah, very. So then, very was it because of Crowley? Because I think Crowley was interested in so many things, which is like with a symposium, why we can almost talk about anything, right? Because Crowley mm. will have probably yeah. done something with it plus you know all sorts of people come from different traditions leading back yeah. all roads lead to crawling yeah. for a lot of people yes yeah, so, i mean so, is that how you got into the eastern stuff yeah to a, so to a very much greater extent like if you look at the golden door material it's kind of yeah. um egypt orientated you know a certain kind of egypt orientated like wallace budge i believe you know was yeah, the main yeah. the main writer there um but crowley kind of injected that orient oriental orientalism into magic i guess with yoga and, and of course um he did look at and went to china you know he um um he had a he, he did have a fascination with Taoism to a certain extent but a very limited form because there wasn't much out at the time yeah so i mean he looked at the e the e Jing, obviously um, he did Tao a translation of that yeah and the Tao Te King and yeah. and so on and I, and I think that book Liber Trigrammaton yeah you know, one of the, the holy books is a kind of it a kind of experiment with some ideas from the I Ching as well you know yeah and and obviously there's some ideas that Crowley had like um following your true will which is very Taoist yeah um you know like this idea of following your natural path where you should belong it's pure Taoism yeah uh, we, we we would call it zeran in chinese which yeah. means to be natural to flow with nature your own nature um so i so i find this aspect of um crowley very taoist yeah you know, so and obviously he you know he did self portraits of him as a himself as a chinese master you know crowley being crowley you know and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> this is one of my favorite my, pictures my, of him really i think he, yeah he's right. got that sort of look hasn't he really and lamb and all the other kind of things it's, you're yeah. right now you so, so yeah so my my my, ba my basic argument is that um dow's about his heart has no argument with crowley and of course there's another aspect a kind of like side aspect a, a side to lay order through um a mukos the nice shambhala yeah um uh shri guru Mah mahendras yeah whoops mahendranath maybe i, <laughs> I, I forget now yeah 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 the big math <laughs> yeah so ob ob obviously he was very much into the Taoist philosophy you know um if you read um uh what was it uh the immoral way of wizardry is yeah correct quite difficult um, to get hold of yeah <laughs> <laughs> there, there are ways there are ways and means Ooh. um so um and quite a few of the chapters talk about the e, a the e Jing and the secret order in malaysia of e Jing uh sort of sexual magic which i found really fascinating i think it's called yeah. the the, pl the plum circle or something like that yeah um which even if it isn't true it's a genius of an idea <laughs> and i love story it. yeah yeah well i thought you, you i remember mm. you saying somewhere that sometimes these things in crowley and C kenneth grant they look like they're kind of a bit told story type stuff yeah which is fun it's a fun thing but you actually think there's kind of more in into it than just a tall story sometimes there's a there's quite yeah, a big grain of yeah, truth behind yeah it. that that that's an, that's another you know um i'm pretty open-minded when it comes to magic i try mm. to read everything i can you know i don't take i don't thump any tugs or wave any banners you know even for Taoism. yeah so yeah so I, yeah I, I fully investigate the typhonian tradition as well uh, yeah and, and allied to that bertio as well 
Oh, so cool. from these mm. different hints, it's just, yeah, there's a hell of a lot. When now you mention it, it's a hell of a lot of hints in Crowley that you've got to kind of move in this direction. It kind of did propel you on quite a journey. Is that, would that be right? Yeah, you didn't absolutely. Just stick to yeah. the books. You actually went to the east. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I went to live in China for twelve years and studied under a teacher. Yeah, but but. To be honest with you, the instigator for that, the final uh, nail in my proverbial coffin, I guess, <laughs> was was the um, was the um, Kenneth Grant talking about this magical coup or coup. Yeah. He, he said he he uses Wade Giles and calls it coup, but actually the pronunciation is gu, yeah. which which kind of means poison or but kind of means essence, similar to the idea of kala, I think. Yeah um there's a natural physical essence and there's also like a spiritual essence um a, a certain um an energy if you like which um and that's what set me off to china saying is this real you know um, um and it, it's a real thing yeah you know. so it turned out so the kenneth grant story mm. turned out to be true pretty much yeah i wow. don't know whether his i don't know whether he he's getting poor miss lee you know trapped in a dungeon with a um he might have got the story ten, ten, the true story ten, from someone else yeah yeah, yeah sure. from another source yeah but it's not complete but they're, 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 yeah there actually is a, a basis um for that kind of like yeah. iphonian magic I mean, uh, and, well, and of course is, and of course kind of run, influences Sorry, yeah so yeah so kenneth grant actually investigate that whole thing about you know it's a bit sax roma you know like secret, <laughs> cult, secret well, cults in, yeah. in limehouse and so on you know but um but there is a chinese population in britain and and there are Taoists in britain you know yeah. who had secret societies so maybe it's not as far-fetched as you'd think you yeah know. this um, is brilliant so but anyway you did i know you kind of as you say you spent 12 years living in china uh yeah. and you managed to make contact with some of these kind of unbelievable in a way societies with this magical power and that stuff the dream of magic really the fantasy magic mm -hmm. you actually yeah. managed to make contact with it and to find yourself a teacher and eventually become a teacher of this material yourself yeah I, I i would say i'm like an assistant rather than a teacher um yeah. i've got a long way to go before i consider myself a sifu or master you know, <laughs> um, well there you go you know but i don't know um, that, think, that's, you know, just, that's just you do have students and i'm sure they're not gonna, yeah they wouldn't agree they're, they're very yeah and, I, and i'm fully i'm fu i'm fully transparent that i'm still learning right. myself yeah as we all, all are you know so yeah i think uh, that's a reasonable yeah. point of view really yeah. to think yeah. everybody's on a journey and yeah. it's always a good idea to have a teacher you, no yeah. matter how long you've been doing it it's good to be learning from somebody else or another influence it's healthy sure. and it's well <laughs> so what, what i really do is like i transmit and translate material which can never be in western hands unless someone does it and i obviously pass it to you and you publish it right so, <laughs> I know. um but but the, but, but the I, but me me the feeling is this right it's like you know like um maybe 200 years ago we had yeah. these like you know tantalizing glimpses of tantra and stuff you know, yeah like, that awful book by Selon, for example you know <laughs> uh, the, the tantric circle of like new bio ladies and all that and there, there was no deeper philosophy to it no. and then, then blavatsky kind of like you know said oh there's this you know tradition in india but still not really you know let's face it she made a lot of it up you know mm. um from fantasy because there was a, a gap in the knowledge there today you can like well today i can walk into southampton uh, my hometown Walk into a walk into a Tibetan Buddhist center and learn, you know, what people would have killed for in Victorian times. <laughs> and, and I, I feel, I'm... yeah, and I and I feel that this needs to be yeah. done with the Chinese material that's just not getting here. 
you know yeah. uh, people people are aware of the Tao Te Ching and the you know the Yi Ching the art of war um Zhuangzi, you know like um authors like this but they don't really have an access to the more secret magical tradition yeah no yeah. that that's what needs to be brought out into the open in the west yeah well that's a yeah it's an amazing moment of this sort of fusion and reaching out of one culture to another i mean i heard it said you know you get crowley's yoga and everything but some sometimes some of the other things were you wouldn't have got access to at the time it was just too secret sure. and too exclusive but that yeah. seems to have changed now as i say and you yeah. kind of opened the floodgates on that <laughs> Yeah, I, I th right. yeah, I think part of it is just a language barrier. It's not an unwillingness. Yeah. Know? So it's just um, there's a language and cultural barrier which some people are afraid to cross. Yeah. So, sometimes people are afraid of cultural appropriation as well. Yeah. Which can be, you know, it but can I be don't. True, but yeah, yeah. But I think <laughs> I, I have my own experience with folk traditions in sometimes these folk traditions are on their last legs and they they reach out as happened with the and also some other people they want to reach out in order to survive and to go to the the, the next period you know they want to sure. sort of make alliances with other magicians in the west and and, and vice versa yeah, as sure. a way of changing the tradition and so they yeah. can grow and live so yeah, that's uh, where uh, yeah arguably uh mukos was like that yeah yeah you know it's kind of like a, a westernization of tantra keeping its essence but presenting it in such a way that may be more acceptable to some western magicians right um so any so anyway um you better say something this is great i don't want to give too much away and everything like that let's say the books are there and yeah sure. uh, mm -hmm. well but you're gonna come and do um a workshop which is variously typical Crowleyites. <laughs> in one piece yeah. of literature it says Taoism for magicians or yeah. just Eastern magic but you know on the basis there probably is a little bit but can you say a little bit about what yeah, you're sure. trying to do obviously people are not necessarily some people will have some specialist knowledge and for most people sure. will be curious and uh sure. some you know broad um, interest yeah i'm, I'm going to teach some unique aspects um for, ex for example i'm going to teach uh the Taoist equivalent of the middle pillar but stuff yeah. like, actually it's nothing like the middle pillar really but i'm just trying to yeah. give you uh, an example which yeah. is called the gold which is called the golden light or jing jing guan zhou which yeah. is like the heart it's, it's like the primary practice in Taoism. It's an right. ex exercise or um um, opening up the inner cosmic landscape of yourself and aligning it with the universe. Mm. Um, so, it's, so it's less about you, but more about you being part of something and that part being you, you know, very hermetic, actually. Yeah. So I'm gonna no, teach I mean, that's a, that's a great thought. I can, the middle yeah. pillar and exercises like it, it's, it is the sort of offering, wherever the system and the gateway into yeah. so many different things you, know, you find traditions of that all over the yeah. place yeah so i brilliant. mean like like for example in taoism um every part of you is divine yeah you know it has an intelligence of itself yeah. we often speak about the intelligence of the nose and the intelligence yeah. of the eyes there's no part of me that is not of the gods <laughs> as the gnostic as the gnostic or is a god yeah yeah it's almost like the egyptians say that as well they've got all these different in my own connection. precisely so, yeah. yeah it's you're mm. a kind of com combination of all these different divine bits sure. and pieces you know that come together to make a whole uh, a, a collective and what you know that's it's interesting that you would say that from the east as well what an amazing idea yeah so, i mean it's it's such an amazing and universal idea it's something that needs to be taught i mean it's gnosticism you know yeah um writ large east and west well um, yeah. i i actually i've I increasingly as i've studied Taoism, this distinction between east and west has become less and less important mm. you know i think you're um, right you know mm -hmm. it's a bit of an artificial 
sort of barrier between the different things. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we live on a globe. Yeah, <laughs> there's no, <laughs> you know, there's no yeah. um, starting point. There's no east or west, and that right. should be telling us. That should be telling us something. Right. right? Um. So, and, and another thing I'll be teaching is um, Crowley said, "Every man and woman is a star." Or the book of the Every Lord. man and woman is a star. So I'll be teaching something about this with the Big Dipper. Yeah. Um, um, another technique, which is aligns your aligns um, similar to um, it's, it's something that might not be familiar with to Western magicians, but something maybe they can adapt in the future, mm -hmm. which is a, a form of stepping meditation. Right, brilliant. Um, yeah, I know this is what this is the an emerging mystery uh, of the Big Dipper and uh, for a while now, but. It's it's like in Crowley where they where they talk about one star in sight. I kind of think probably this is what they're talk, talking about star in the sense of this collection of stars. Sure, and uh, right. it's a remarkable piece of magic that we've kind of it's so obvious, but we've kind of forgotten forgotten to take notice of it. Yeah, sure. So many yeah. secrets there. Yeah, I mean, just some of the stepping patterns using Taoist stepping, magic. Oh wow! Um, yeah um i'm pretty sure you know like in um you know these kind of things would have been done in pagan times yeah in, in the west not just it's just that i happened to survive a bit longer in you know in china because it didn't have that you know inquisition thing going <laughs> on you know oh um, dear um so so i think some of these like these ideas of um stepping patterns which is creating an energy matrix on the ground. Um, um, or, or so they say, it, it could be a psycholo psychological, it could be an actual energy matrix, it might be both. Yeah, yeah. Um, both is it, psychological and physical practice together, which is yeah, the right. hallmark of magic really, yeah. this combination yeah. of yeah. doing me, Yeah, me, me personally, I don't like to give explanations of magic or how it works, because no. I don't do it. Like, yeah there are theories we can theorize yeah. but um um you know the thing is is we don't know where the borders are between psychology and reality and mm. so on you know so who am i to say you know <laughs> <laughs> right. this is good all, all, yeah all i know is i can give techniques which seem yeah, to work seem to prefer. seem to work how they work and they'll be useful in whatever your magical tradition is. I, I, yeah. but, but these techniques that you mentioned, as far as I know, will be useful to you. You know, you'll be able to yeah. find a way to integrate them into whatever you're doing. Yeah. And, so, so, so a, so a thelemite can take these away and adapt them to his own will. You know. Um, so, I think another uh, another aspect of this is, for example. Um, one of the other we've got the big dipper there's also something in western magic called the square of saturn yeah okay which relates to the earth manifesting physical results and in chinese um metaphysics we call this the luo shu and it has its own stepping pattern mm. and where depending where which square you start in you cause a certain or you psychologically prepare yourself for a certain result um um so i think this is another aspect which um could um really benefit the western magician yeah so even th so even though i'm even though i'm teaching Taoist techniques i'm keeping the western magician in mind who may not may not enjoy that flavor you know so yeah um, so no i know you're you're kind of quite super fit and all this sort of stuff but people in the workshop they'll be do they need to think of anything? <laughs> no, not not at all. You know, you just don't bring themselves be, and yeah, you, you know, don't you don't you levels don't, and you don't have to be physically fit. No, um, but, you know that that's just a hobby. You know, it's, yeah. I mean, health is a, health is an important basis in Taoism I and mean, yoga, like Hatha yoga and things like yeah. this. But only only as only in the sense that you just feel good about yourself. And, yeah, um, not not an obsessive narcissism even though i probably am a little bit <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't say that right. okay so look we covered a bit of ground and the you know fantastic stuff i think 
I think it's fair to say you're a fan of we've recovered you're a fan of Crawley. You, you, yeah, got, I mean, yeah, I mean, how for would me, you say? Like, yeah, he, he's like he's like my grandfather, you know. Is he? And and he kind of like got some dodgy I, ideas. I don't, but... I mean, <laughs> who who hasn't? You know. Yeah. And his ideas, you know, some of them were challenging. Yeah. You know, some of the ideas that seemed dodgy at the time, maybe not so much now. Yeah. Sometimes he was a bit manipulative, you know, um, yeah. of, pe of people and women and men. Yeah. But you know, he he was he was a pansexual, you know. It's, <laughs> you know um, yeah, he had his flaws, but then you know, crazy wisdom sometimes manifests like this, you know. Um, yeah. And I and I and I don't think he tried to justify it or hide it, you know. Um, so. No, it's just an advantage in a way. At least you know what you're <laughs> you're yeah. in dangerous territory. <laughs> okay, look about Salima. Then do you want to make a roof because we usually distinguish between the Crowley sort of inspiration and then the Thalemic thing. Yeah, yeah. The philosophy that he kind of the well, Thalemic movement yeah. that he channeled. Well, when I looked at Thalema, I found it surprisingly ancient. Mm. Like it's like meant to be this big revelation and everything, but I, th I thought, well, is it? You know, uh, you know, people in India were saying this like millennia ago, and in China yeah. they were saying the similar <laughs> things, you know. But I, I suppose with Salima, it's the symbolism that goes with it, you know, the yeah. cycle of the cycle of eons and um, some other ideas yeah. about Gnostic terminology, you know, from the PGM and stuff like this. But the very, the very heart of Thelema is something you, you take take away all the trappings, if you like, you know, like oh, well, you know, the beast, and you know, I'm all this, and <laughs> take that, take that away. Yeah. Um, what you're left with is a very um, a philosophy which is pretty much basic to most spiritual traditions. Mm. That that. That have a Gnostic underpinning. Yeah, I think whether you're it's right. Buddhism, whether it's Buddhism, Tantra, Taoism, the essence of it is to um, become what you're meant to be. Mm. Yeah, back to that Taoist term, Zuran. Yeah, okay. um, to, to find your purpose, your Tao. Yeah, because my Tao oh, may not be the same the as yours. Dao. <laughs> yeah, so it might, might not be the same as yours. I mean, Tao yeah. just means nature, really. Yeah. And it boils down to it. Um, but it doesn't mean mine is going to be the same as yours, you know. And uh, um, which okay. is another, impo another important thing. It saves a lot of argument. Yeah. Many people, you know, are arguing over, oh, well, this is right, this is wrong. Crowley said this, Crowley did that. Well, actually, it doesn't matter. What it means to you, yeah, may yeah. be different from what I I see, you know. So, because we're on different paths, you know. Um, so yeah, and they same, don't necessarily collide. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you get the right one, it won't collide. But debate is healthy, you know. Like I wrote on a, one of your posts, uh, as brothers fight ye. As brothers debate. fight ye, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was thinking of Gerald Suster, you say that. Like, he was very into boxing. Right. Enough. And he said there's this funny thing in boxing that when people, they bash each other, and then, but then they feel a kind of great emotion for each other after the fight is finished. Yeah. There's a sort of a feeling of incredible respect Brother, and notice brotherhood, for each other. Yeah. Brotherhood, of kind of yeah. brotherhood. I thought that was very... Uh, Noticeable that he said that. Yeah, uh, uh, I've forgotten who said it, uh, but yeah, fighting is just a flip side of making love, you know. Uh -huh. you know so. Oh, well, <laughs> don't tell them. <laughs> okay, look, we better kind of do short, quite a short piece, but um, uh, if, if I, I'll drop in some pictures and uh, if you've got anything else that uh, I might put into the timeline. Yes, do you want to just briefly yeah. say, um, if you about future plans what's next in the pipeline for you yeah um i'm, I'm writing a book obviously um, for, uh, for you good. guys <laughs> right um so and um, this time i'm looking at the mysteries of death you know from a uh, which includes necromancy 
Yeah. I know it's a con another controversial topic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and too, you know. <laughs> but following on from that, there will be a book on um, the sexual mysteries of Taoism. Yeah. As have never been covered before in print. Right. Yeah. From so we're going real, to do the death yeah. first, and then we get to the sex, not the sex, and then the yeah. death. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get 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 the uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, eros and Sanatos. Right. Um, um, so that that's what's in the pipeline, um, and I'm translating original material, nothing that's been seen in print before. Um, so um, a, a real genuine tradition and a, a full a full yoga of the sexual tradition. Um, Amazing from, stuff. Yeah, I'm uh, yeah, really looking forward to working on some of this material with you. Uh, yeah, I'm, me too. Okay. Uh, well. Hey. Just remains for me to say, uh, well, look forward to that. And uh, yeah, I'm going to say, do what thou wilt, you'll be the whole of the law. And yeah, love and the law, love and the will. Okay. I'm going to find out the Chinese for that. And oh, well, that would be great. Right. right. <laughs>